1939, Frida Kahlo's career was taken off, but at the same time her personal life was falling apart. It was under these circumstances that she produced her greatest painting, The Two Fridas. Ten years previously, she married Diego Rivera, a world-famous Mexican artist 20 years her senior. The bizarre beauty and the beast dynamic captivated the world, and they went on to have one of the most obsessive and tumultuous relationships in art history. Their infatuation, passion and devotion was matched by jealousy, anger and betrayal, with both of them having numerous extramarital affairs. In 1939, Frida spent three months away from Mexico and Diego. She had her first solo show in New York, which was a huge success. The Hollywood actor Edward G. Robinson bought four of her works. Later that year, she had a show in Paris. Once again, a great success. This time, the Louvre bought one of her works. André Breton, the leader of the Surrealists, described her paintings as being like a ribbon around a bomb. Her work was a sensation and made the art world, a notorious boys only club, sit up and look at how the female experience had been marginalized in our culture. At the same time, she became a great celebrity in Paris and was featured in Vogue. Not only were the lines already blurring between her persona and her art, but the commodification of her image had also began. Frida returned to Mexico in April of 1939, a different woman. At 32 years old, she was the toast of the avant-garde art world, an accomplished artist who had made it without her famous husband. But while she was away, Diego had also enjoyed his independence, and their relationship started to fall apart. Over the years, Diego had taken many lovers. Frida had two, men and women. But Diego's affair with her beloved sister Cristina was a step too far. Frida moved out of their house and Diego began divorce proceedings. She was heartbroken. She cut off her hair and abandoned the Mexican clothes that Diego loved. It was under these traumatic circumstances that she began to paint the two Fridas, which she said at the time showed the Frida Diego loved and the one he didn't. After her accident at 18, she spent a year in bed recuperating. Her father gave her paints and her mother had a special easel made so she could paint in her hospital bed and had a mirror placed above her so she could paint herself. For someone so restricted, her own body was a very convenient subject. The reason that most of her paintings were small is that so many of them were painted lying in bed. The Two Fridas was an exception. It is square. 1.73 meters by 1.73. It is almost life-size and was Carlo's largest painting. There's actually a commercial reason behind the change. She was getting a lot of recognition and was advised that the large canvases were more commercial. Frida was coming from a different angle, painting small self-portraits inspired by Mexican folk art. Her work was not directly political, but her paintings reflected the idea that the personal is political long before the term was coined. A major influence was Ex Votos, also known as Retablos. Ex Votos were inexpensive paintings by self-taught artists on small panels, often made of tin. They are deeply personal images offered to saints as a thank you for answered prayers. Almost any subject is possible, from thanks for finding a missing pet to surviving an operation. They are often bordered by a story describing what had happened. In fact, Frida's mother commissioned one when she was badly injured in the bus crash at 18. Frida would go on to emulate them in both style and as a confessional. Their use of allegory and narrative would inspire Frida. A 
Another popular tradition she drew on was 19th century Mexican portraiture, many of whom were skillful enough painters but with no formal training, like Frida herself. Along with Spanish colonial portraiture, their subjects often have blank expressions and are in a stiff, artificial pose. There is a flat, rigid quality to these paintings that we also get in Frida's art. And in 1939, Frida had admired two paintings at the Louvre, which almost certainly influenced the composition of the two Fridas. Her work is uniquely her own, but like her, it emerged from multiple hybrid sources. At a time when few Mexican women had the opportunity to express themselves at all, Frida was exploring multiple identities. In the two Fridas, a double self-portrait, the darker-skinned Frida on the right is the indigenous Mexican Frida that was adored by her husband, and the lighter-skinned Frida on the left is the European Frida that he rejected. If we look at the Mexican Frida first, this is how we think of her, wearing a traditional Tejuana outfit. The indigenous Tejuana, a matriarchal society, became a cultural symbol for the Mexican revolutionaries. By dressing the way she did, she sent a clear message of cultural identity, nationalism and feminism. But the Tejuana skirts, boxed blouses, flamboyant hairstyles and facial hair also had a more practical purpose as a disguise. By focusing attention on her head and shoulders, she concealed and distracted us from her disabled body. She had already started wearing longer skirts as a child to disguise her shorter right leg caused by polio. The movement of the dresses also concealed her limp. And after the bus accident, she had to wear medical corsets because of severe spinal injuries. Over her lifetime, she had more than 30 major operations including, in 1953, the amputation of her right leg. She would also adopt the Weekel, a sleeveless blouse made without fastenings, so she could drop them loosely over a back brace or a plaster cast. In 2004, a small drawing was found in the back of a wardrobe at Casa Azul, Frida's home. It is a self-portrait in charcoal and crayon that shows Frida's broken body underneath a transparent dress. She has a shattered column for a spine, a medical corset confining her torso, and a wasted right leg. Underneath the drawing, she has written in Spanish, appearances can be deceiving. Yet Frida didn't adopt the indigenous clothes until her wedding day in 1929. It was in fact Diego who had suggested it as a show of Mexican pride. So by discarding the clothes and cutting off her hair after her divorce, she was rejecting Diego. In the painting, Mexican Frida's heart remains intact, sustained by the small portrait of Diego, whereas European Frida's heart is disconnected from her beloved Diego and bleeds profusely onto her dress, a Victorian lace wedding dress similar to the one her mother wore. The portrait of Diego Mexican Frida is holding was owned by Frida and was with her until she died. Artery connects the portrait to her exposed heart. It is then linked to European Frida, whose heart is even more exposed. This Frida is trying to stop the flow of blood that runs through both their veins with surgical forceps. It is not working and blood seeps out onto her skirt, mimicking the pattern. Blood is a reoccurring theme in Frida's work and represents both her physical and mental suffering. As in an earlier painting, she uses blood as a metaphor for union. But for Frida, who was unable to have children, it also alludes to womanhood and fertility. The bleeding heart is a fundamental symbol of Catholicism, but can also be seen as symbolic of Aztec ritual sacrifice. What is clear to me about this painting is that although they are suffering and broken, they are supporting each other. A connective vein unites the loved and unloved Frida, the European and Mexican Frida. The weaker heart supports the stronger one. This is a painting about the loss of a relationship, but the duality of her identity is central to the painting. The complexities of a biracial identity and how one balances the two sides was a lifelong concern for Frida. 
As usual with her work, the background is stylistically simple, making us focus on the two figures. The stormy skies signal turmoil and unease, and remind us of El Greco. We can compare how Frida saw herself at the start of her marriage with how she saw herself at the end. In Frida and Diego, he is the colossal figure, the great artist with his palette and brushes, supporting his adoring, timid wife. By contrast, the double self-portrait painted at the end of their marriage shows that despite her suffering, she is her own woman, supporting herself. Frida and Diego remarried in 1940, less than a year after their divorce. Their relationship was chaotic, dysfunctional and tempestuous. But ultimately, they couldn't live without each other. Both maintained that they were the love of each other's lives. Diego rather coldly described Frida as the great fact of my life. And she once said, there have been two accidents in my life. One was the streetcar and the other was Diego. In 1947, Two Fridas was acquired by the National Institute of Fine Arts in Mexico City for 4,000 pesos, about $1,000. That was the highest price that Frida was ever paid for a painting during her lifetime. In 1953, she had her first solo show in Mexico. A few months later, her right leg was amputated at the knee. It was the beginning of the end, and desperately sick, she died a year later. Frida Kahlo had to fight for her place in the male-dominated art world. Nothing stopped her, not even her disabilities. She had constructed her own identity around her politics, ethnicity and disability and would inspire generations of female artists who still face discrimination. But although she was moderately successful, it wasn't until the 1970s that she achieved worldwide acclaim. Mainly known as Diego Rivera's wife in her lifetime, it wasn't until her work was rediscovered by art historians and feminists that we now think of Diego as Frida Kahlo's husband.